I hate this thing. Shut up and sit down. All right, guys, what we've got for you today is this Mag Magnus Magnuson 900 gram chopping axe. That's a direct quote. I bought this thing from a local hardware store. Now, if you're in the UK, you'll be familiar with B&Q. You're in the States or Europe or elsewhere. I don't know if you've got them over there, but it's kind of like our go to probably the equivalent of like a Harbour Freight. Now, I told a lie in the title. I did not pay £20 for this. I paid a grand total of £21 for this Magnuson Hickory Chopping Axe. And boy, don't I know it. But what I'm going to do in this video is show you a few ways in which you can upgrade a rubbish £20 chopping axe into a tool which is actually nice to use. Now, to give myself a fighting chance, I took the time to try and select the best axe in the store. The handle is made of American hickory, which is actually quite a nice thing. And I took the time to select a handle that had a minimal amount of runoff. Now, if you're not sure what runoff is, it's where basically the grain is not straight, and you tend to see these sort of rings running down it. I'll show you an example of the same style of axe I saw in the store with horrendous runoff. And that basically means the handle is prone to cracking and splitting, which is not good. Unfortunately, however, I'm not sure how well you can see in the light, but it's covered in this horrible varnish. And I get why manufacturers who make bulk items like this do it. Because obviously lots of people are going to be in the store picking this thing up, putting their grubby mitts all over it, and the varnish just helps it not to stain the wood. But if you're using this tool quite a lot, it's a pretty horrible thing, because over time your hand tends to sort of build up friction on this, as it's got a very small surface area. You can find your hands getting quite hot and sweaty, which when coupled with a varnished handle means to... Slipping. Not good. Now if we take this out of its, um, let's go with sheath comes with this rubbish little rubber blade protector. The actual paint job on the head isn't terrible, or so I thought until I looked at the end. Obviously where somebody has ground down these ring wedges, they've also taken off the top layer of paint. And that's not just on this one axe I selected, that was on the majority of the ones in the store. On this side we've got the Magnuson logo, which is actually quite smart, I think. And on the other side we've just got the 900 gram weight displayed. The edge is dull as anything, I can quite happily whack my hand against that without any risk of cutting myself. But overall, this is not a terrible starting point and we can definitely do something with this. Another thing to mention on the handle is it's very thick. This thing is a club to hold. And again, that's not a good thing. I can't even fully close my hand around this. And again, over protracted use, this thing is going to give you some pretty sore forearms. But on the plus side, if you want to kill any baby seals, you could probably use it for that. So we're also going to be thinning this handle down. And just a personal preference choice, I'm probably going to octagonalise it, because I tend to like doing that on my axe handles. So I think the first port of call is sorting out the handle. I'm then going to get this black paint off. I'm probably going to grind down this whole area, because at the moment the wood sits in the axe head slightly recessed. We're obviously going to sharpen this up, and then I might end up blacking the head, but not with paint, maybe with cold blue. And I'll probably electrochemical etch these markings back in, because I actually quite like those. And yeah, overall, Magnuson needs a little bit of help. So, let's do it. So now that we've got this thing clamped in the vise, let's talk about how to get this varnish off. Now, like I say, I'm going to be reprofiling this handle, but let's say you've got large hands and you actually want to keep it more or less as is, you just don't like this finish. If you try and use sandpaper to get this varnish off, all you're going to end up doing is clogging up a load of sandpaper. The easiest way to remove varnish from a handle like this is just to use any sharp knife, put it in at 50 degree, and just drag it back. And you can see there, you're getting a nice sort of slice of the varnish coming off. And so long as you do this fairly evenly all the way around, and you get a decent reflection from a good light source, you'll be able to see where the varnish is and where you've missed spots and where you need to work on. But like I say, I'm not going to be doing it this way. So I'm going to hit this thing with a rasp, thin it down, and see what we're left with. Rasps are such fantastic tools. This has literally taken me about five minutes and already hopefully you can tell that that handle has been thinned down quite a lot. Next I'm going to flatten off these sides, both top and bottom, and then I'll work on octagonalizing it. When you're coming across these concave curves, you want to swap over to a rounded rasp. That makes it much easier to get in. There you go, there's the four sides now squared up. So now we need to work on the octagonals. And with the octagonalizing done, it's time to get rid of this last little bit of varnish. Now 
Right, that's all the varnish off, and this thing is already looking and feeling loads better. It's much lighter, it's much more whippy, and it's much more comfortable in the hand. It will also obviously get thinned down a little bit more when we get to the sanding process, but for now, I'm pretty happy with that. Now I'm going to be using my belt grinder to sand down the axe, but if all you've got is a detail sander, or an orbital sander, or a belt sander, or even just a sanding stick with some sandpaper, that's absolutely fine. It's obviously just personal preference and how much time you're willing to spend. But for me, this is a 100 grit sanding belt, and we're going to use that to get rid of the rasp marks. Okie dokie, with the handle now sanded to an 800 grit finish, it's kind of up to you what you want to do next. You could wax this, you could oil this, you can char this. I think with this axe, I'm actually going to give it a charred handle. I personally haven't done much charring, but I quite like the aesthetic, and it does apparently actually increase the strength of the wood. So let me get my blowtorch, and we'll give this a quick going over. Right, with the handle charred to the extent I want it, I'm now just going to give it a quick going over with the 800 grit again. Just to knock off some of the soot and kind of even out the, uh, the overall pattern. Okay, now that that's done, I'm going to wax the handle. For that, I'm just using a simple wood finishing wax. I'm going to apply two coats of this, and I'm going to buff it off in between each one. But this should make it look super pretty. Hell yeah. I love that finish. The good thing is charred wood is super thirsty as well, so it should soak all of this wax up really nicely. And if you do this while the wood is still warm, it's going to do it even better. So, with the handle now done, it's time to move on to the head of the axe. Now as I say, I'm going to be reprofiling along the top, but I've also noticed if you look at the pole of the axe, that's not even straight either. It's also got a slight dip in this nearest corner as well. So I'm going to grind that flat. I'm not quite sure how I'm going to get the paint off yet. I'm going to try wire wheeling it. If that's not effective, I will probably panic. But make sure that if there's any stamps you want to keep, you take a photograph of them before we accidentally remove them. Well, that looks loads better already. Unfortunately, the wire wheel was incredibly ineffective at getting this paint off, so I'm swapping over to a 240 grit belt, and we'll attack it with that. And then I'll probably end up grinding this back up to uh, either 4 or 800 grit, depending on how I feel. <laughs> Right, we've got the head polished up to a 600 grit, and that is as far as I'm going to bother. Next step is I'm going to cold blue this in order to blacken the head, so we need to acetone it down and get painting. This is just to get any contaminants off the, uh, the head, any oils or dirt that's come off my hands, etc. Just got to tidy up the pole again as I spill a little bit of cold blue on it, and I'll probably give the edge a sharpen now as well.
Well guys, I won't lie to you, I'm pretty pleased with how this thing turned out. From what was a rubbish little £20 store-bought axe to what would now be like a really nice bushcrafting axe or similar, this thing both looks and feels fantastic in the hand. I really like the handle on this thing. I think I might start charring a few more of my axe handles. But like I say, you don't have to do it exactly this way. The whole point of this is you can kind of customise and personalise however you'd like. But I definitely recommend spending the £20 and giving this a go. Because it just goes to show, you don't have to spend 100 quid to get a nice tool. But yeah, with all that said and done, if you like this video, consider liking it, consider commenting and consider subscribing. And I'll hopefully catch you on the next one. Take it easy guys, and hopefully see you there. This is supposed to be a new axe.